Okay, well, I think it's recording now. So, hello everyone, good evening, um, happy Friday. Um, welcome to the first of uh, the CK workshop, um, hosted by CSG. Um, we appreciate everyone coming. Um, we have a lot here, and if anyone comes, uh, is coming in, um, basically, uh, there's a stream chat channel. Um, if anyone wants to ask questions throughout the presentation, um, I will see if I can answer, I'll answer, try to answer them as I go. Um, and yeah, I will begin. Let's see. Go. So, let's see. The next slide. Okay, so first, let's have a very brief introduction. So, I'm, my name is Henry Wei, and, um, Often, my handle often, you find it everywhere, is the Kid of Artrania. That's how you pronounce it, uh, it's my Twitter handle. Um, so let me just, I have a few pictures here, so let's start from the left. So for this one, um, I guess one of my hobbies uh, outside of doing CTF is I like to, I like to like, put puzzles, jigsaw puzzles together, especially like the really large number of pieces one. Um, this one, I definitely love playing CTF. I play it pretty professionally. Um, I usually play it with this team right here. It's called Perfect Blue. Um, yeah. And one of my favorite things is doing assembly. Love assembly. Uh, there's some people who don't like that, and you shouldn't listen to him. Um, but assembly is cool if you learn it. And my favorite language here is Haskell. That is, I guess this. The, my, the language I really like, other than assembly. Okay, so let's start with introducing the team. So here uh, we have our committee, core committee, um, me, uh, Kiwi, uh, XX Sensor, and Paradox. These are our core CTF committee group. Um, and uh, we have a few mentors here, uh, FreeX, um, I pie for fun, Razor Ninjas, and Ari. These people um, will also will be part of the mentor mentee group, which I will kind of briefly talk about um, later on. And basically, this year we're gonna it's a very small program, so we're not going to have a lot of mentees. And our CSG affiliate is of course Origami Hawk. Uh, we love this guy. Uh, we appreciate for um, kind of kind of coordinating with CSG um, to make this happen. And also, I haven't didn't mention here, but we also have our really cool faculty member, uh, Dr. G, also goes by Math Guy. Um, here, he's also um, pretty um, pretty cool. Um, yeah, we are recording, so it should be it should be recording. Yeah. And next, so first. Um, Oh, kind of to start, what is the CTF? So here's like very, very, um, um, here's like a very the general definition. Um, generally, I like to describe CTFs as just break stuff in the system. And uh, generally, what is the CTF? And there are uh, the main types, there are two different types you'll always hear in CTF. Generally, um, this is more common, the Jeopardy style. It's just you have a lot of challenges and then they're worth different points depending on how hard they are. And the harder ones get higher points, the lower ones um, have lower points. I think I should do this. Um, I don't think... Hold on a sec. I probably should disable streamer. Or enable it. So... Uh, da, da, da. There you go. That now you won't be able to see that. Let's get rid of that. So what is cybersecurity? So basically, whenever you start learning about CTF, it's basically just cybersecurity stuff, and you now talk about this cool buzzword. And basically, if you're looking at classes, if you ever taken a class in like cybersecurity, like UTD cybersecurity, you generally seen this like triangle. What the heck? Why is uh? I know why. Okay, sorry. 
let's do that okay so you will generally see this diagram this availability integrity confidentiality i'm gonna say basically ctfs have almost nothing to do with this so this is probably what you've seen is more just like how to defend yourself against attackers and stuff generally we're not going to really cover this stuff in ctf because ctfs you're mostly focusing more on offensive stuff so like attacking other things so you're not going to be doing this and the basic mantra is just keeping your computer devices secure yeah basically with you, when you're looking at ctfs we're basically saying um you learned how to secure devices just by learning how to attack things and that way you then learn how to actually enforce that same security so these are objectives for ctf our workshops so generally there's a ctf there's a lot of different categories enough for everyone to like find what they're more interested in <laughs> And um, generally, there's a lot of topics to t talk about. So we're going to just do like a very brief overview of most of the major topics. But this goes without saying is there's still a lot to learn in each topic. And we're not going to be able to cover it. And later on, um, this is why we also in included like this mentor-mentee program. Unfortunately, because we this is our first year doing it, we don't have a lot of mentors and mentees to kind of do this. But generally how the mentor mentees work mm -hmm. is you're basically going to be grouped together in very small yeah. mentor mentee groups and you're going to be kind of working together to do like these challenges throughout the entire semester and this is the second bullet this we basically have like our own kind of ctf with a bunch of challenges that we picked out from lots of different places and this is open to everyone but we also have, this is also for the mentors, specifically the mentor mentees, they have prizes reserved for the top scores. And also if you score above a certain threshold, uh, right now we decided it's around thousand points, but we might change that as needed. But generally I would say, uh, we're gonna be talking a lot about theory in these workshops. So I would encourage you, strongly encourage you to do these challenges uh, when you have the time to because it helps to enforce those theory that we talk about in workshops and kind of apply it. Because I think generally the fun part about this is actually doing stuff, not learning, like um, hearing all this stuff. So here I would kind of segue into this. I would say, I personally think CTFs are a lot of fun. Why? As I mentioned before, there's like a lot of different categories that you can kind of look at. And they're basically suited for a lot of different people. I even know like a guy who is not even CS major. I think that person was like, I think like social, social psychology major or something like that weird. And he found like there's some interesting stuff about CTF. So it's like something that everyone can like kind of do a little bit of. So it's not just um, very CSC. So like, there's like a lot of different stuff you can do. You you find you could do like go like do crypto, which is like a lot of math stuff. That's not interesting. Maybe you could do web, which is more like looking at kind of kind of attacking websites. Maybe you don't like that. Uh, then you could go into pwn, like assembly, looking at breaking actual binary programs. There's like a lot of different things you can do, and generally. A lot of these CTF challenges, they're all very puzzle-like uh, because they all often encourage you to um, kind of use some of your previous knowledge that you know and try to build something new or like fit, solve something new or break something, something that you've never seen before. So it's not very um, academic in that way. Um, let's see. And then, so first I would like to present this problem to kind of explain what CTFs can look like. So here, a very simple program, um, 24 lines of Python. Um, and generally, Python is very much like almost, I would I often call it pseudocode, almost like pseudocode, because it probably pretty much is, because it's very easy to read, um, easier than some other languages. So here, I have a program. I have a link here if you guys want to try it out. 
Um, but I'll actually look at it, run through it. So basically, this is a program that kind of simulates like a bank. Um, tells you, I have like an amount of dollars. I start with $1,000, and then it asks me if I want to withdraw. If I want to withdraw, then I will, if I, if I say yes, then I basically give amount that I want to withdraw. And then here it checks how, that I have enough money. If I do have that money, then I subtract from the amount and then I withdraw that amount. And then it keeps, it state, goes in this loop that does this again and again. But then if you look down here, there's this interesting thing where, um, let me change it into a pointer. So see here, I have this, if I reach a million dollars, and then I get this interesting stuff. But how do I get a million dollars if I started out with a thousand dollars? So if I'm looking at this program, it looks like it's not intended to give me like produce like this, that, this million dollars from thin air. Because obviously if you're a bank, you don't want to be like have this kind of um, you don't want to like produce money out of thin air. But then there's actually an interesting bug in this uh, code that lets you get a million dollars. If anyone wants to give a shot at that. Uh, I mean, just um, if you can, if you want to just shoot something in the uh, in the uh, in the uh, chat, if anyone wants to give some suggestions, else I think someone said let's withdraw a, some some money. Negative input. Okay, we we can try that. So let's look at this. So here I'm running the actual program. I think you can still see it, right? Yeah. So here uh, I run this program. So I can withdraw, let's say I want to withdraw $500. So now I have $500 left. Um, let's say if we do- and You're already there. Let's say negative, like negative, what, $500? Oh, look at that. I go back to $1,000. Then what if I withdraw some more money? Oh, look at that, more money. On any resetting? Let's say if I want to draw that amount of money, something like that. Oh, I became a millionaire. Thanks. And this is an error just because there's no file of that. But generally, if you're if this was a CTF problem, oh. then you, right now you have gotten a flag. And a flag is basically like yeah. your the the thing that you want to get to submit <laughs> for points. And that's like okay. And generally, oh, these kind of challenges are. <laughs> what, like um, what you would see in CTFs is you have these broken programs and you're trying to do stuff to it that's not intended. Hot mic. What do you mean, partridge? Okay. Let me uh. Go back here. But yeah, basically, generally when you're looking at CTFs, um, this is like um, you're doing this, um, you're trying to break programs to do something that it wasn't intended for. And this is basically, generally all kinds of programs have this kind of stuff. So um, right now I'm going to go so now I'm going to cover the different categories that we're going to be covering as well. <laughs> I like your I like your joke, Chris. Okay, so let's start with cryptography. So this is generally um, when you're looking at cryptography, you're generally looking at trying to break some sort of cipher. Uh, you're trying to break some sort of implementation of like some some um, cipher algorithm. 
And the idea of cryptography is just you have some hidden messages. You're using something to encrypt it so that other people can't see it, can't read it. Um, then some useful tools. Um, so Sage is often very used, often used in uh, crypt when you're doing crypto <laughs> challenges. Python is something very uh, useful. Uh, but actually, Sage is basically Python with a lot of libraries. Um, you have, ob obviously, if you're taking university classes, I believe there's that introduction to crypto you can always take. Uh, this is that graduate class. Um, that is also very useful. And also, if you're taking discrete one, you're probably, you, you may or may not be covering some of this crypto stuff, depending on who's teaching it, but I don't know. Um, yeah, and then Crypto Pals uh, is has a lot of crypto stuff. Uh, we also have recommend Crypto Hack, which is also a newer website. Oh yeah, Desmit is uh, very good at crypto, from what I heard. Um, so reverse engineering, this is uh, basically reading assembly. Um, generally, what you're doing here is looking at programs and trying to um, figure out how it is trying to encode a flat so like here you're you just it's kind of you, you it's different from crypto in that here you're trying to read assembly instead of just probably reading some high level language that's encoding it and it might not even be encoding encryption it could be some other weird stuff so generally there's a lot of interesting stuff that can happen under reverse engineering when you're looking at assembly level stuff Here's the tools that's useful. Um, GDB is very useful. Um, make sure you use it with something else, with like Jeff or Pwn Debug. Um, S-Trace is very useful, L-Trace in that same vein. Um, Ghidra and Ida Pro. I would recommend Ghidra because Ghidra is free. Ida Pro is like hell lot of expensive. Um, Binary Ninja is another alternative. Um, it's like maybe hundred, two hundred dollars for students, and they almost have this disassembly, this decompiler stuff. Oh yeah, Ida Pro. Uh, there's there's a lot of um, cracked ones, pirated ones, floating out in their interwebs. I don't condone the usage of these pirated stuff, but it's out there. I, I'm just gonna put it at that. Um, oh, and then Radar 2, if you want to be a masochist. Oh, I think Cutter is an alternative for, um, if you're doing, if you want to use Radar. Uh, Cutter is like a GUI version of Radar. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, Ida, um, like kind of the, an old GUI version of Ida. Uh, oh yeah, and here's the Pwn stuff. Um, with Pwn, also, it's, you're going one step further than, like, uh, reverse engineering is you're actually trying to break the binary, what it's doing. So here you're trying to break, um, the code and have it do something kind of like the first example I showed, but it's a lot more interesting because you're doing it at the binary level. So, like, really, really low level stuff. Um, here, some useful tools, uh, GDB. Again, is very useful when you're doing this kind of stuff. Uh, Ghidra, Ida Pro, Pwn Tools is like de facto for when you're writing exploits. Um, and then if you want like places to start learning stuff, Pwnable KR, Pwnable TW, they have a lot of Pwning stuff. Um, we also have a lot of challenges that we pulled from there. Um, and then here's the uh, the live overflow. I would recommend you uh, uh, use this uh, link here use the live overflow hacking stuff. They have, he has like a lot of videos that is um, very good, um, does a lot of the explanations. Oh yeah, and Microcorruption is also um, pretty, very good website for like the low level stuff. Um, yeah. And here, yeah, this is GDB with Jeff. You can see it's very colorful. Uh, if you look at plain GDB is like no color. So that's already a plus. And then this is uh, like a pwn tool, like a very simple pwn tool exploit that I wrote. 
for one of the opponent challenges a while back. Um, now we're looking at web. Uh, generally, um, what I've seen a lot, what I've seen a lot in web is you have these web applications where you try to sanit where it fails to sanitize some user input, and generally when you have that kind of stuff, you could have it do some uh, stuff that isn't intended. So like you could possibly, if let's say, um, one of the most biggest examples is like XSS. Um, you have like some some user input that is also interpreted as HTML. And what you could do that is actually have it have in, include like script tags and then have it execute arbitrary code. And also a lot of t other times I've seen is when you're having languages, you kind of misuse them. And a lot of people misuse uh, PHP. It's very notorious for that misusing. And this, there, there are a lot of bugs you can you, you end up with that. Um, tools that often you use in web, you have like Burp. Um, Burp Suite is often used. Um, the Dev Dev Tools is, I I unironically very useful. Um, you have Python Request Library. Uh, that's useful if you're trying to automate some requests, um, do some scripting with that. And Nmap uh, generally uh, it's more pen testing but you sometimes find it useful with web stuff as well. And speaking of pen testing, um, yeah, Metasploit would be used more, I think, yeah, you might use it in web or pen testing. Um, but with pen testing, you have Nmap, obviously, uh, Metasploit. Um, but let me explain what pen testing is. Generally, um, it's like web stuff in the front end and you have some other uh, kind of stuff in the back when you're looking at a server You're trying to get root on that server. So it's like a little bit of everything um, Generally is you're looking at the entire infrastructure from the web service all the way down to like the roots the kind of what how the system was managed um, and Generally you have nmap metasploit and then you have the enumerate Enumeration tools, I think, is what it's called, is what they are. Paradox. Correct me on that. And then, because it's like a little bit of everything, they have, you could probably use tools from other categories as they apply. Um, and then, yeah, forensics. Um, generally, um, some some people say that forensics and Stego are kind of different, uh, but I tend to put them in the same category. Some people might uh, crucify me for that kind of opinion, um, but I don't care. But basically the idea is you have some hidden information that's put in plain sight. So like generally it exists in some file, other file, or some kind of image or some kind of sound file. Um, or you're trying to, or you may have some wire or capture packet capture stuff um, and these are some tools um, obviously if you're doing packet capture stuff you want to use Wireshark to view them um, you have StegSolve is notoriously um, famous for solving pretty much any image kind of Stego stuff uh, you have hex editors uh, if you're on Windows use HXD is probably one of the most um, popular uh, hex editor on Windows. Use Binwalk if you want to like kind of Binwalk helps you like figure out what types of files are hidden inside the file inside a file. And strings is also useful to like find um, readable strings inside a file. And these are like some examples here. You can see this is like a normal image. But then when you're looking at a specific like uh, color bit, you can see if it's the lower bit of the image, you can see this cat image of a cat. Um, here we have some binary. And if I did strings on it, oh, I see there's a bunch of strings here. And then when we try to, uh, 
you see these uh, base 64 strings. Once I unbase 64 that, oh, there's a flag right there. So these are, that, that was actually one, me solving one of the easier challenges a while back. Uh, and this is Binwall, you can see how sometimes JPEG file or like simple files could have some other stuff hidden in it. So in this case, you have a JPEG image right here, but then below that you have some, um, some zip files and some random stuff here. Uh, oh yeah, and this is the slide, last slide. Um, so generally, um, when you're looking at um, when you're looking at like CTF, often like competing competing well in CTFs take like a long time. So don't give up. Uh, generally, it takes a while to go from totally beginner. So, but I would say just keep working. Um, try to learn different things and generally another thing I would say is when you're learning it's often not very uh, straightforward so like oftentimes learning is like a lot of stuff you're kind of learning um, you're learning this and learning that but then oftentimes you get a lot of dead end so then generally you want to like you're generally just learning whatever you're doing it's I, I'm just trying to say anything that you're doing, it's probably useful still, even though it doesn't seem like it at that time. And here, I think I have a video. I don't know if you can hear it, but this is like a video from Life Overflow. Um, see if I can play it and do you guys see if you can hear it? Maybe you think you there's can, some kind of shortcut it, or, or at least a very efficient path. Oh yeah, I can post it. But do you guys hear? Okay, if not, that's fine. We can uh, post it here. And I will also post the slide so you can also see the the link here. Link is right here. Um, but I think that is the last slide for that. And I believe uh, now um, I will turn this over to uh, Kiwi. Kiwi's, uh, he will kind of stream a web challenge.